I can see clearly now the rain has gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind I'm gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day Think I can make it now, the pain has gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Here is a rainbow I've been praying for Gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day Bright, bright, sunshiny day Look all around, it's nothing but blue skies Look straight ahead, nothing but blue skies I can see clearly now the rain has gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind Gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day Think I can make it now, the pain has gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Bright, bright, sunshiny day Bright, bright, sunshiny day Bright, bright, sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day Good morning, everybody. My name is Bob, very grateful recovering alcoholic. And welcome to worship service this morning at the Recovery Church, uh, as, or as we call it, Studio 253 State. A um, couple of announcements for us this morning. First, a reminder, Martha does have her prayer and meditation meeting on Zoom, and that's held Wednesday mornings at 11 o'clock. And the next meeting will be this Wednesday, February 10th. So let Brooklyn or Martha know and they will get you a, a link to the Zoom information and you can join and, and uh, wonder. People I've talked to who've participated have been really touched and, and appreciate it. So if you're in need of some good prayer and meditation, check it out. Um, also volunteers, we do need some Story of Hope volunteers for the month of February, March. So call the church office and Brooklyn will fix you up with that, uh, tell you what dates are available and, and hopefully make arrangements that you can come in and do it. And then uh, hopefully this is a special announcement for us, but February 17th is Ash Wednesday. And unfortunately we won't be able to do things like we normally would, but we will be doing a drive-through. Uh, Martha will be giving out ashes from five to 5.30 in the church parking lot. So please come, we'll have a line of cars and we can go through and say hi to Martha, get our ashes. And also she will be recording a special video that we can watch uh, before that on Wednesday. So that'll, more information will come out about that, but um, Martha will be sharing a, spe a special message as well. And now would be the time of the church service where we would get up and give each other a hug and pass the peace of Christ. Well, we'll do that in our own special way at home and 
give ourselves a hug, give those who are with us a hug, and please don't be afraid to reach out to somebody and say good morning to them as well. And so now with that, Martha, would you please come up and start our worship service? Good morning, welcome to the Recovery Church. My name is Martha and I am a grateful recovering alcoholic. Hi, Martha. Hi everybody. Um, this has been a tough time for people that live with addictions and I have multiple addictions. So I just wanted to say to you, if you've had any trouble, if you've found yourself struggling a little bit, this would be a great time to start over and know that your community is with you. Welcome to this place which you make holy by your presence. Come in with all your vulnerabilities and strengths, all your fears and anxieties, all your loves and your hopes. For here you need not hide or pretend to be anything other than who you are and who you are called to be. Come into this place where we can heal and be healed, forgive and be forgiven, love and be loved. Together we make this a holy place. Let us uh, join together in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as Christ did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things new, I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Now let us sing together how great thou art.
Good morning, kids. So today I'm going to say some words and have you think about what pictures come in your head when I say these words. Are you ready? Okay. Horse. Tree. Dog. Flower. Fish. Cloud. Bird. Waterfall. God. Hmm, that's a tough one. It's really hard to think of a picture of God. Huh. The only way I know how to get a picture of God is by reading the Bible. Now, the Bible does not have actual pictures of God, but we believe that the people who wrote down the words in our Bibles were told by God what to write. There are a lot of times in the Bible when what God told people to say included secrets about what God only knows. Today's verses are a good example. They describe how mysteriously wonderful God is. God says in the Bible that there is no way that we can truly know the things he wants to tell us unless we read the Bible and find out. So let's listen to Pastor Martha today. She's going to share some things that she's learned from reading her Bible. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brooklyn, and I'm an alcoholic. What? Uh, this is the time of the service where we lift up our prayers as a community. So if you're at home and you're thinking of someone, you can say a prayer, or you could say their name out loud, or um, just very quietly in your heart. So for the alcoholic and addict still suffering, those who have relapsed and those who have lost their lives, we pray for God's guidance and grace. Lord, in your mercy. For all that suffer from isolation, depression, or have any other mental issues, we pray for God's compassion. Lord, in your mercy. For those that are physically or ill, or in pain, um, and we have a special request for Pastor Joe's friend, John. We pray for God's healing presence. Lord, in your mercy. For all the healthcare workers that stand in front of this pandemic, the doctors, the nurses, and everyone who put their lives in front of ours. We pray for God's strength. Lord, in your mercy. And for all the people that we have lost in our lives, we pray for God's everlasting love. Lord, in your mercy. And now, let us join in with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, harmony. Where there is error, truth. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. 
where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Hi there. I'm Deb. I am a grateful Al-Anon member for almost 10 years. How about that? Hi. So um, I've been putting this off for like 10 years because I've been really nervous about doing it. I, I guess I always thought that I had to have my, totally have my life together. Um, and everything should be lined up. And there's so many rags to riches stories up here that I, I just felt like I wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't going to be very inspiring, but it's my story, and so I'm going to tell it to you. Um, so in this season of my life, I am working to firm up my identity, no longer in some previous roles as wife or full-time social worker, but still a mother, sister, aunt, friend, a dog mom to my Sadie, and my favorite role, Oma to my grandkids. But this role that I'm working on is one that where I'm trying to be more fully human, more, more connected to God, um, more trusting of God. And this means, has meant working through steps two and three, kind of over and over again, coming to believe God could restore me and then turning my will and my life over, basically to let go of some things in my character that were not helpful. And so that's the topic of my story of hope today. So I start with a story. Um, I was walking through the woods, um, well, this would be like three weeks ago now, with my dog, and it's a beautiful winter day, and the snow is gently floating down from the sky, and the trees are beautiful and artistic, the way God can only do it, and um, I noticed that uh, there's some leaves that are still hanging on these trees, and um, I think... It's nine degrees. What the heck are these leaves still doing hanging on up there? And then, of course, it hit me that that was my lesson for that day, that um, we try to hang on sometimes to things that um, are not helpful to hang on to anymore. And um, it was my, my letting go lesson for the day. And maybe you can envision that, too. So I was, I'm like the leaves, and... Um, I used to read this book called The Fall of Freddie the Leaf to some kids when I was a school social worker. And it's about this, this Freddie who um, was uh, kind of counseling his other little leaf friends. Daniel, in particular, was really afraid of floating down. But Freddie was just telling him, you know, it's okay. It's good. It's normal. It's natural. And you just float into the arms of God, basically. And um, so it also made me think of Freddie. Although this analogy is really about death, there is a sort of death experience when we give up things that have been central to us, maybe even have helped us survive or at least get through things without losing our minds at other points in our life, but we no longer find useful and in fact hold us back from this relationship with our higher power. So I wanna give you just a little bit of background um, I grew up on a family farm where there was an illusion of control all over the place. My dad was ex-military, Marine, my mom very nurturing, but we had a tight routine with meals and work. Daybreak to sunset, we had a plan. And so we kind of thought we were in control, but what farmers are not in control of, and what we all know about this, is that we're not in control of the weather. So we were always worried about, is there going to be enough sun? Is there going to be enough rain? Is there going to be enough harvest time before fall comes? To, you know, Are we going to be able to get these crops out? Are the cows going to get sick? All that kind of stuff. So um, also, uh, let's see. Um, so my pattern was then, what I learned from that experience was I had this underlying anxiety over things that we really didn't talk about. You didn't talk about what you were really nervous about. You didn't use those words. You just were. 
but we had control in the top. So this, this helped me in things like academic success. You know, I was right on with some of that stuff, but it sucked in my closest personal relationships. Also plaguing me was my, in, my inability to be straight with people about what was bugging me. Minnesota nice paired with unspoken sulking got in the way. So where's the hope? Where am I now? Um, I am watching closely to signs around me like leaves that struggle to let go, but finally do into their safe place. I am listening to some very kind and non-judgmental people in this wonderful church family, my Al-Anon family, including my sponsor. I'm working the steps. I'm spending more time in my readings, and I also benefit from that indelible farm life need for routine and the foundation of great love that I got as a, as a daughter in that family and a sister. And I try to remind myself that even though I get scared or anxious, God will give me the strength and courage to meet the challenges. I only have to accept, i.e. let go. Some days I am still totally a hot mess, <laughs> but I do see progress in learning to let go of what holds me back. So, um, finally, a talented member of my home group had us do this activity a couple years ago, and I've had it on my fridge since then, honest to God, two or three years ago. So it's a picture of um, our own hand, and you can do this at home, um, closed here, and letting go, and then really letting go and letting God. And so sometimes I look at this and I think, where, where am I at today? You know, am I closed? Am I halfway open? Am I all the way open? And where do I want to be? Of course, I want to be up there. So um, I ask God to help me continue on my journey. I'm grateful for people who give me great art, like things to let go of. Moret just drew this. It's fabulous. It says, let go of fear, need to please, chasing perfection, toxic relationships, comparison, self-doubt, past mistakes, and things you have no control over. How's that for cool? So anyway, with the help of all of you and with God um, and Freddie the Leaf, I forge on. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sonny. I am an addict. Grateful to be in grateful to be in recovery, and very humbled to be a member of this church. Um, hi, Sonny. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> uh, I was asked to come up here and talk about uh, about money and offering and stuff like that. Um, of course, we need to keep our lights on and the heat going and the building open. And we can, we can only do that with your generous donations. Uh, we've been doing fairly good so far. Uh, so I'm asking you to keep doing what you've been doing. Um, it won't be long now, I think, before we have uh, a little bit of change with this COVID thing. Perhaps we'll be able to uh, start seeing things in a different light here. And uh, so, Hopefully we can keep moving forward. Um, if you want to make a donation, you can write out a check and send it to the Recovery Church at 253 State Street, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55107. Or you can go to our website, which is www.therecoverychurch.org. And when you're there, you'll see a red, a red heart. Click on that red heart. Uh, you can make a one-time donation uh, you can set it up so you can have money taken out weekly, bi-weekly, bi-monthly. Whatever works for you works for us. So thank you. Have a great day. And let's give thanks.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah. And uh, as you listen to these words, I just invite you to imagine one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen in nature. We're getting a lot of good ideas in our slides today. Um, but this is really about how big and glorious God is. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Uh, scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and grow weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I think the heart of that passage really is, have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Well, people have been trying to figure God out for a long time. And there have actually been a few arguments about it. Heck, there have been wars. <laughs> Some people use this cross to describe God. There is the vertical beam which reaches from earth high into the heavens where the immortal, omnipotent God resides. And there's the horizontal beam which reveals the many ways God, that we find God on this plane through relationships, community, and so many of us at the Recovery Church were raised only hearing about the vertical God, a God that was far, far away, high in the heavens, sitting on the throne of judgment. There was no way we were ever going to be good enough for that God, let alone talk to him. And of course, it was a him. We all know what he looked like, right? An old man with a long, white, flowing beard. Well, most of the time around here, we talk about a pretty down-to-earth God, the God we find in relationship, the God between us, the God with skin on. It is sometimes easier to access this God, to talk to this God, to sit with this God. There's an old hymn called In the Garden. Any of you know that hymn? Um, the lyrics go like this, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. What you may not know is that the woman who wrote that was really talking about a man she was in love with, and she had to sneak out to the garden to see him, but she made it about God, so it was okay. But that's the kind of intimacy we want with God, and that's good. But every now and then, it's also good to step back and behold the majesty of God. When we were planning this service, the worship team was reading the assigned scriptures for this week, and both the psalm and the reading from Isaiah spoke of that majesty. 
the jaw-dropping awesomeness and scope of God, the enormity and power of God, just how big God is. When I was a seminary chaplain, a new student who would become a favorite asked if she could start meeting with me on a regular basis. She had a spiritual dilemma. She said that before she began seminary, she was filled with just this enormity, how enormous God was. She just would say, it was enormous. She used to lie in a field outside and watch the sky for hours, day or night, it didn't matter, it was clouds or stars, either one was pretty magnificent. She would be filled with this sense that whatever or whoever the creator was, it was enormous and powerful, and somehow she was a part of it all. In fact, that was one of the things that led her to seminary. I bet Deb had those moments on the farm. <laughs> but after embarking on her studies, writing papers about God, and reading about God, it started getting less enormous. She said it's not as enormous as it was. She was losing her sense of connection to a power so much greater than herself. She wanted to meet with me to keep in touch with the thing that had brought her to seminary in the first place. She was really wise to do that. It wasn't a requirement. She was an excellent student, but studying God was not the same as experiencing God, and she knew she needed to make time in her life to do that. She did manage to stay in touch with the wonder of creation and the enormity of the creator in spite of going to seminary. So it is possible there's hope. We need that personal relationship, but oh, we also need to see how big this God is who loves us. How awesome. There aren't very many better places to experience this than in the majesty of nature, do you think? I used to love it when people would tell me that their church was nature and that that is where they were on Sunday mornings. They were out there communing with God. They, fe they felt I'd give them a hard time, but they expected an argument. But what I would say is, probably a pretty good idea. That's what Jesus did. He went to the hillsides to be alone. What better way to connect with the creator than through creation? Though I don't think Jesus was on the golf course. <laughs> think of a time when you have been stopped in your tracks by the power and beauty of the natural world. When my first grandson, Sawyer, came to the cabin for the first time, he was very young. He wasn't even really talking yet. He didn't learn, well, he did learn to say hi about the time he started walking. I still remember him walking around the hospital when he was 18 months old as his brother was being born. I was watching after him and we were sitting in the family lounge and he just would go and walk up to each person and say, hi, hi. Hi, and then they would, of course, expect a continuing conversation and would say, um, what's your name, little boy? I said, nope, that's his only word, just hi. <laughs> Doesn't go anywhere from there. But later that summer at the cabin, he would utter his second word. When we laid a fire in the fireplace and had it popping and burning at a good clip, he simply stared at it and said, wow. Later, we walked down to the lake and stood at the end of the dock. From his dad's arms, he looked out at that expanse of water and said, wow, wow, wow. It helped us all to see the miracle that laid right out there before us. Think of the last time you experienced a moment of wonder and awe when you re were reminded of the majesty of God. Brooklyn told me about a moment he experienced when he was just 11 years old. Would you share that story with us now, Brooklyn? Good morning, everyone. I'm Brooklyn, I'm an alcoholic. Uh, obviously, being born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, um, my dad had a landscaping business in Rockaway. Uh, Rockaway is a peninsula. 
there's the bay on one side and the ocean on the other side. Uh, we had about 320 clients that we did every week and about 40 of them were really, really large houses. Now me being 11 years old, the summer before I would just pull weeds from the dirt and everything, but I wanted to learn to push the lawnmower. Um, so I did, my dad taught me the right way, it's a dangerous machine, but they were 21 inch commercial lawnmowers and they were hard to push. In Rockaway, there's no trees, there's so much heat. And we would go to certain blocks right by the beach and I was exhausted before I even saw the houses that we had to finish. It was just overwhelming. But I still wanted to push that lawnmower. So I would go home and my mom would see me and she'd be like, what's wrong? I'm like, I wanna keep pushing the machine, but these houses are huge. So she's like, the next time, my mom was very, very wise. This was about a year into her illness. And she said, the next time you go to one of those blocks, she's like, before you do anything, get out of the truck, walk past all those enormous houses and go sit on the ledge on the beach. So I would go there, I would sit, and the first thing I wanted to do as an 11-year-old was be on the beach, but I wasn't, I was working. So I'm sitting on the beach, and then I noticed the waves crashing, which I love swimming, I wanted to go jump in there. But then she had told me, don't think, just look. And then I would look at the ocean, and it was calm, and all of a sudden I wasn't thinking of anything, I was just looking. And then you see the sunlight hitting on the ocean. And then you see the horizon. For me, it was majestic. I was just, I was in another world just looking at something that was eternal, limitless. And it was a, a really cool moment. And what happened was then I would hear my dad say, oh, let's go, time to work. So. I get off there and I turn around and I go back to those enormous houses and they didn't seem so big anymore. Um, they were limited. I knew cutting the grass, there was an end to something and I would come back. And I started thinking about playing ball as I was pushing the machine. So when I got home that day, my mom's like, how'd it go? And I'm like, um, it wasn't too bad. She's like, remember one thing, she's like, no matter how big or hard something looks, the way you just felt is bigger. That's what God is. My mom had a great relationship with God and she absolutely adored Jesus. And she told me never forget that. Um, a year later, unfortunately, she passed away. And that first year was hard. And I remember every year going to the beach, those houses, I didn't care about it anymore. I used to sit on that ledge and I knew that she was okay. And um, she taught her son a beautiful lesson and she was a great teacher. So thank you, mom, love you, God bless. Thank you, Brooklyn, for sharing that story and I think brought me into those moments when we get lost in a reverie like that and we're suddenly in a different place. And I think um, the grandeur of God can help put other things in perspective. When you think about it, the idea of, of the Trinity is helpful. Though church councils argued about it for hundreds of years, you're like, how can you have a God in three persons? It's either one God or three gods. Is this, a, you know, monotheistic or are you worshiping more than one God? But the truth is that we do have just one God. The mystery is that this God can come to us in so many different ways. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, those are just examples. In person, looking up at the sky, even uh, being alone with our own thoughts. God's a bit of a shapeshifter. When we need Jesus with skin on, we can pick up the phone and call a friend or a sponsor. When we need to remember how big and beyond human beings God is, 
We need only look at creation and every form of life on the face of the earth. And then there's that Holy Spirit, unseen and always moving between heaven and earth and between us so that we know that God is present. God is everywhere. Don't forget to take the time to stare at the ocean or to stare into space. Don't forget to say, wow. And if you've learned a few more words, you can even say thank you. Amen. This is our family table. It is a table of love and grace, forgiveness and new life. All are welcome at this table. Christ offers this meal to satisfy the hunger and thirst that no human being can fill. Come in your brokenness. If you feel you are not worthy, you will be the guest of honor. This meal is Christ's way of saying, I forgive you, I love you, and I will never leave you. On the last night of his life, Jesus shared a final meal with his closest friends. He knew that in the days to come, they would suffer greatly and he would no longer be with them physically. At the end of the meal, he took the bread and said, this is my body, broken open for you, I forgive you. At the end of the meal, he took the bread and said, this is, this is my cup, this is the blood I willingly shed for you, I love you. 
Then he said, each time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, remember me, I will never lose, leave you. Holy Spirit, pour out your blessing on this sacred meal. Bless us as we eat and drink, that we may be transformed by your grace and set free to love without hesitation. Open our eyes to see your face in every stranger and to bring hope to those who have none. Amen. Please join us in the prayer of the communion prayer. We do not have to be perfect or even good to come to this table, O Lord. We simply need to come as we are and to celebrate your power to change our lives. We know that we have fallen short of what we want to do. We trust only in your love. We rejoice that your love is so great that you invite us to come as guests, especially in our brokenness. Grant that we may receive this sacrament as a turning point in our lives. May we grow to be like you as you become the center. Amen. Please join us in the prayer of thanksgiving. We give you thanks, Lord, that you have given us the cup of joy and the bread of peace, which refresh and restore us to new life. We ask you to strengthen us through this gift of your love. Help us to accept one another and to not judge people who are not like us. Help us to keep in deep community love toward one another patience in the midst of the problems of life and in the hope of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives in our lives and with you through the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And let's join together. Grab the hand of someone you love near you. Grab yourself. Reach your hands to the sky. And let's conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Please not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Can't see nothing in front of me. Can't see nothing coming up behind. Make my way through the darkness 
Can't feel nothing but this chain that binds me Lost track of how far I've gone Far I've gone and how high I've climbed On the backs of 60 pound stone On my shoulder a half mile line Come on up for the rising Come on up, lay your hands in mine Come on up for the rising Come on up for the rising tonight Lift the house this morning Bells ringing, fill the air Wearing the cross of my calling On wheels of fire I come rolling down here Come on up for the rising Come on up, lay your hands in mine Come on up for the rising Come on up for the rising tonight Faces gone, black eyes burning bright May the precious blood bind me Lord, as I stand before your fiery light Dancing in a sky filled with light May I feel your arms around me May I feel your blood mixed with mine Dream of life comes to me A catfish dancing on the end of my line Sky of blackness and sorrow Sky of love, sky of tears Sky of glory and sadness Sky of mercy and sky of fear Sky of memory and shadow Your burning wind fills my arms tonight Sky of longing and emptiness Sky of fullness, sky of blessed light